There are lots of uh, different indicators you can add to market charts to try and help you figure out which way the next move in the market might be. So in this video, we will look at uh, one of the more popular different ways of applying it and a slight uh, twist when it comes to generating buy and sell signals. This is the, uh, the stochastic. I've got a, a 10 day stochastic here on the bottom of the chart. I've used the popular settings 1066. Um, here is the chart of pound against the dollar. And you can see the stochastic is made up of a couple of lines generating various buy and sell signals uh, on this chart. So in this video, I'll talk a bit about the theory behind stochastics, um, the, 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 the maths that goes into it. Then we'll jump back onto the chart, look at things in more detail, apply it to some real markets and uh, have a twist, a different way of applying these that can be a bit more reliable than the normal buy and sell signals. Hello, I'm David Jones from Capital.com and I thought we'd do uh, another of our series of trading education and trading strategy videos. So we'll look at the theory behind a popular indicator, uh, take a look at it actually in the real world and a different twist on how we can use uh, these sort of indicators. As usual, if you're watching and you're not subscribed, if you could click on subscribe, it helps uh, support the channel and it means we can continue to push out lots of uh, different videos on markets during the week and also the occasional strategy video like this. So let's look at this popular indicator, stochastics. So it's a very simple principle behind uh, stochastics. It's based on the observation as prices are increasing or of course decreasing, the latest close tends to be uh, near the extreme of the range. If a market's going up, uh, prices are rising, then obviously the latest close is gonna be, you'd expect, pretty, pretty near to the top of that recent range and vice versa in a downtrend. With stochastics, we have um, two lines. We have a percentage K line and a percentage D line. And percentage D is the line uh, that gives us the signal. What the percentage K line shows is uh, where is the price in relation to the recent range as a percentage? So if we're looking at um, five day percentage K, it looks at the range for the last five days and where is the price currently as a percentage of that range? If the price, for example, is above um, 80%, then clearly it's near the top of the range. If the price is, for example, below uh, 20%, then its uh, percentage K is showing the price is near the bottom of the most recent range. Then we apply the percentage D line to our oscillator, and this is simply a moving average of percentage K. So it's a smoothed out version of percentage K, and we get our buy and sell signals, as with many oscillators, when these two lines uh, cross over. So that's the theory. Let's take a look in the real world. So here's the stochastic on pounding against the dollar. We'll look at a couple of different markets while we're going through this. So I have mine set up for 1066. It's a 10 day stochastic, 533 uh, is also a popular combination. And you can see um, both of the lines here generating, uh, for example, a buy signal uh, down here sell signal up here at the top. So these two lines crossing over, generating these various buy and sell signals. And of course we have uh, on the right hand side, the scale. So 80% uh, above here, the market is thought to be at an extreme. And then down here below 20%, uh, we have the extreme uh, on the downside. So a suggestion the market has perhaps uh, slid uh, a little bit too far. But it doesn't work all the time. Let's not forget with these indicators, you know, we do get um, false signals. If we look to the latest on pound against the dollar, we did have a sell signal at the end of November uh, 2020, uh, but the market went sideways for a couple of days and then uh, started moving higher. So it's just as important as ever to use sensible uh, risk management techniques. If we go back and look at some of the more, uh, the other buy and sell signals at an extreme, we have this one down here, middle of September. Uh, the market did eventually make a base down at these levels, then a sell signal uh, up here in early September, which proved to be a pretty good signal. Uh, and then if we go back uh, right to the beginning of the chart, a couple of buy signals right back here uh, in June. So I think one way of using this, if we're looking at the simple crossovers, for our buy and sell signals. If, for example, we were taking this sell signal here in September, if we're going short, don't forget to still use stop losses. So perhaps if we're going short, 
we have our stop above the high of the day or, or an obvious high from a couple of days before the extreme uh, in the move. So I think we still need to think about risk management. And here's a couple of examples um, off the gold chart. Again, we've got our 10-day stochastic down here. The most recent buy signal came right at the beginning of December as the price of gold was moving through uh, up through $1,800 an ounce. So again, I'd suggest if we were buying into that stochastic signal, having our stop probably the other side of this low the day before, the other side of 1778 was a low, seems a, a sensible place uh, uh, to put it. And the, the real extreme sell signals came up here uh, when we were seeing gold moving to all-time highs. Eventually, it came, right? We did have a signal, first of all, that didn't work, uh, but then uh, a couple of days after the all-time high, once more, uh, the stochastics hooked uh, to give us a sell signal. So they can be pretty good engaging extremes uh, in the market. But now I'll talk about a slight twist on how to use it that can be perhaps a bit more reliable than just the straightforward two lines crossing over. As with other indicators, we do have the idea of bullish and bearish divergence. And I think this is a, a powerful way of using things such as uh, stochastics. Um, you know, broadly speaking, all indicators do take the price data, apply a formula, and show it in a slightly different way. In the great scheme of things, uh, the indicator should be following the trend of the market. If the market's rising, the indicator should be rising and vice versa. But divergence happens um, when this isn't the case. So for example, bullish divergence is where the market has been sliding, the market makes a new low for the move, but our stochastic has made a higher low. So the stochastic is diverging from the price. It can be a suggestion that the downtrend is running out of steam. Bearish divergence is the mirror image. The market is rising. The market makes a new high uh, for the up move, but our stochastic makes a lower high. So this is bearish divergence. Again, a suggestion that perhaps the uptrend, the momentum is starting to falter. And I think with bullish and bearish divergence, you don't see them every day, so they're not that common, which for me makes them uh, worthy of extra attention when they happen. Let's take a look at some real markets and see this divergence in action. So let's look at this idea of divergence. Um, I've gone back to a pound against the dollar uh, chart here, daily chart again, 10 days stochastic. I think there's a, there's a great example um, just here. So if we go to mid-September, the pound makes a low around 127.60, rallies back to 130, but slips lower still. Uh, but look what's going on with the stochastics. The stochastics make a low here on that first initial move. Uh, but as the market, after the market rallies and slips back down, we have a higher low on the stochastics. So this setup is bullish divergence. So again, can be a suggestion that even though the market looks weak, uh, the weakness is maybe coming to an end. So again, if we were trading this, if we were buying in uh, after that uh, that lower low, you know, I think for me the obvious place to put a stop loss is the other side of the extreme hit uh, on that lower low. So it can set up a good uh, risk reward. At the time of recording, we do have a bit of bearish divergence going on where the market has pushed higher. Uh, but the stochastics are falling. So once again, if we wanted to trade it up here at current levels, selling short at, where is it now, 134.19, with a stop above that most recent extreme, you know, could be one idea if we were following the bearish divergence. And I said these sort of signals don't occur all the time, so they're worth paying attention to. Here's, um, here's the price of silver. And um, to spot any divergence, really, I've got to go back about four months at the time of recording where the price of silver pushed up to $26 uh, end of July, sells off, pushes higher. But look at our stochastics. We've got uh, lower highs on the stochastics. So even though the trend in silver uh, looks strong, our stochastics are suggesting that perhaps all is not quite right and we do have some bearish divergence. So I don't think it's a signal you're going to spot every day, but when it does occur, it is worth paying some attention to. That's it for the latest of our trading education and strategy videos. Uh, I hope you found it useful. So from me, David Jones and Capital.com, we'll leave things there. For more trading videos just like this, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you.